Hi everybody, this is David Shaw again for five minutes of photography. And today, what I wanted to talk about was manual mode and ISO. So in our past little lectures here, I have talked about aperture, which you probably remember controls the amount of light that's allowed to enter your camera, as well as the depth of field. Okay, so those are the two things that aperture controls, light entering the camera and depth of field. The next thing I talked about was shutter speed. And shutter speed is the amount of time that the shutter is open on your camera, exposing your sensor or film. And that also controls light based on the amount of time that light is allowed to enter your camera. And it also controls blur. So whether that's purposeful blur, like blurring a waterfall, or, or an accidental blur, like using too slow of a shutter speed to uh, that causes blur in from hand motion or from a moving object. Um, <clears throat> so shutter speed controls light and blur. Aperture controls light and depth of field. So today, what I wanted to talk about is first is ISO. Now the ISO of a camera. <laughs> there's a lot of technical stuff about it, but in practice for photographers, what it means is the sensitivity of your camera's sensor to light. So the lower the number of your ISO, like 100, that implies very low sensitivity to light. So if you're going to shoot at 100 ISO, you need to have either pretty bright conditions outside, or a long shutter speed, or a very fast aperture. And that's also an and or, or all of those things combined. Now, if you're shooting at an ISO of, say, 3200 or 6400, that really increases the sensitivity of your sensor to light. And so in dim or dark conditions, you can maintain a faster shutter speed or a smaller aperture and or a smaller aperture and still be able to attain the image you're looking for. So the higher the number of your ISO, the greater the sensitivity of that sensor to light. Okay? Pretty straightforward. So why don't you just shoot at high ISOs all the time? Pretty common question. But ISO comes with a cost. So the higher you turn it up, the greater the amount of noise that's created in your image. And so this image that I have up here behind me, um, it was taken at 100 ISO. Very low, it's a fairly long shutter speed, tripod mounted, you know, kind of sunset evening light -like conditions. And if you zoom in on it, you can see that the sky is completely clear. There's no, you know, no little speckling, no pixelation. It all looks really good. But if we pull up another image, oh, let me find it. This one, for example, this was a desperate situation. I was in Chile. A volcano was erupting at night. It was kind of a rare opportunity. I didn't have a tripod. Um, and so I cranked my ISO way up in order to get a um, in order to get a fast enough shutter speed that I could handhold in nighttime conditions. I think I ended up cranking up the ISO to about 12,800, which was well above what this older model SLR camera was probably best for. And you can see when I zoom in on that, the sky has a lot of these little pixels. See these little pixelation? That is what noise is. And though you can deal with noise to a certain extent um, through, you know, in your post-processing programs, there is a limit to how effective you can be with it. So the cost of ISO is noise. Aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Master those three things. Really get to know them and how to set them in your camera, and you'll be a long a way towards creating images with intent. Which brings me to the final thing I wanted to talk about today, and that is manual settings. So, taking our camera, putting it onto that terrifying M setting on your top dial, that means you have control over your aperture and your shutter speed. And what that forces you to do is create image with, images with intent. You need to know how you want that image to look in your final image. Are you shooting a waterfall? Do you want that blurred? Okay, if you do want a blurred image, then you're probably going to want a slow shutter speed um, and a tripod. 
And if you are wanting also to kind of combine that with a deep depth of field, then you're going to want a tightened down aperture, like f16 or something like that. So that's making that decision. You're making your images with purpose. And you're coming at them saying, I know what I want out of this photo, and I'm going to create it using these settings. So that's what manual forces you to do. You don't have a lot of, hear a lot of photographers saying, you know, you should always be shooting on manual mode. And that's what expert photographers do. It's nonsense. What manual does, though, is it teaches you what every aspect of your camera does. It's a very good thing to do for new photographers to shoot in manual a lot. But don't shoot in manual always, because it will slow you down. So if you're in a landscape that you can work with for a period of time, great. By all means, shoot in manual. If you're not, if you're shooting wildlife or you're you know, shooting sports or something like that, it's probably not the best setting for you, especially when you're just learning your camera or just learning photography, because it is slow. Uh, I use it almost all the time when I'm shooting landscapes, but I use it rarely when I'm shooting wildlife. So you play with manual mode. Um, if you want a little bit of homework, I suggest go make, let's say, two images with intent. So go outside, um, you can shoot in your living room if you want to, it doesn't matter where you are, but decide what your shutter speed is going to be because of how you want the image to look. Do you want it to look really tack sharp? Then you're probably going to want a fast shutter speed. Do you want to blur traffic moving outside your window? Then you're going to want a slower shutter speed. Experiment. Decide what shutter speed works best. Then think about your depth of field. Do you want everything in focus from front to back? In which case, you're probably going to want an aperture of f16, f18, f22, something like that. But if you want a very shallow depth of field, say you're doing a portrait of a family member, or you're taking um, a picture of wildlife and you want to set off the, with a wildlife from that background, then you're going to want an open aperture, like f2.8 or f4 or even f5.6 if your lens is slow. So that's what I want you to do. Create a couple of images with intent. And then come on over to my Facebook page and um, my Facebook group, DWS Photo Support, and share what you're getting. Share your images. Thanks again for joining me for five minutes of photography. This is David Shaw.